ಚೈತನ್ಯಾರ್ಘ್ಯಸಮಾರಾಧ್ಯ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಕುಸುಮ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಚೈತನ್ಯಾರ್ಘ್ಯ ಸಮಾರಾಧ್ಯ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಕುಸುಮ ಪ್ರಿಯ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಥೌಸಂಡ್ ನೇಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಾಡಸ್ ಲಲಿತಾ tomorrow is supposed to be the beginning of navaratri nine days nine nights of goddess so i thought of telling this very nice nama very nice name of the goddess the infinite consciousness which is in the form of the devi likes to be worshiped with the oblation of consciousness the infinite consciousness of the devi is formed of the flower of consciousness in smaller less like what bhagwan says in in uh, what's that uh, very i got the name atma samsthiti hi atma darshanam to be the self is to know the self upadesa upadesa like that it's an explanation of that how devi worship is also an explanation of that i remember there was a discussion in times of bhagwan in the old hall and they were talking about exactly about purush and prakriti feminine power and the masculine power and someone said that <clears throat> he is incorporated in she he is part of she and then that group which was saying that that feminine power is the ultimate but really jubilant and happy but then that person said the other thing that without he she has no existence because he comes in she if you take out h e then s has no existence this is all one and same only one is the source that energy that stillness in us other is activity movement if we don't recognize that stillness then we don't know the source and that is the problem knowing the source and continuing with activity it's not a problem but continuing with activity without knowing the origin is suffering prakriti or nature which is changing which is dynamic which is activity is us but before that comes we are also that stillness which is unmoving which is unchanging which is only witnessing it is witnessing awareness 
in all of us. To know that this pathless path is very important. Here we stay uninvolved witness in all the activities of the world and all the activities of mind without any ownership without any doership here purification of mind antakarna occurs by just being an observer not attaching our desires to whatever is happening around us some of the schools of spirituality they talk a lot about purification of mind as the first process before you enter into spirituality whether it is buddhism or patanjali yoga sutra niyam and niyam rules and regulations for purity of mind is very very important here we don't even care of mind we disown it here we recognize ourselves as the one without any thought here we question the entity which is engaging with thoughts if a thought is coming to you you ask whom this thought is coming to if you think it is coming to me then who is this me when you scrutinize this voice within us which says i and mine it takes us to the source once we know the source stay there when we stay there initially we still think we are in the heart as awareness and there can be thoughts emotions feelings bodily movements changing situations in awareness it seems these things are coming towards this body 
though you have disengaged but still there is a deha bhav bodily sense is there though it is not affecting the bliss as if the reflection of ego is still somewhere around though not affecting the deep contemplation and with the awareness to this pure awareness soon the difference between the awareness of the body in heart disperses into the awareness which is everywhere awareness within and awareness outside and awareness everywhere is the same awareness no difference so in this awareness when a body moves comes interact or goes you only see awareness using a body to interact wherever you live awareness is there everywhere if all the forms are finished disappear there is no place for awareness to go it is always there everywhere it's not that awareness is only in the sacred things only difference is in sacred things it is more obvious that is the only reason those things become sacred awareness is in every being but if the being has realized that awareness then it starts manifesting from it to be in this pure awareness naturally without effort give up all efforts to be something else the something with a form with a mind with a personal ambition goal likes and dislikes attachments and desires is all big myth if you carry on with this you will never know awareness
when we give up wrong identity by simple observation, we find ourselves as awareness. To know awareness, we have to give up all doership. Doership is the result of I thought, I which owns a mind and a body. When things are not happening the way we want, we as ego, it gives unhappiness, but let's say things have to be like this only. This is the way the body has to play a role. Who are we to decide? Can we move out and be an observer who is always in bliss? Yes, it can be done. When we stay in dream, we suffer. Ego is nothing but a dream, an illusion. In reality, no one is in bondage. No one needs freedom. We all are free. We are always free. The day we realize this truth, we realize it was a joke, a joke on us, probably by us because we never looked here, we never looked from this angle, we were always busy to sort out problems. See all the scientists, they are looking into finding solutions to the problems. how to make life more happier, how to find why something is happening the way it is happening. Sometimes they get clues, sometimes they have discoveries, but it would be an unending journey to know things. And for that individual scientist, life is short. He will not be able to find out every answer to every problem and will finish without knowing who am I. All research is in domain of mind. Truth is beyond mind. 
we can only know truth by putting our ego on this experiment not anyone else ego not in the lab science can never find an answer to this whatever number of experiments they do only a scientist can find the answer if he or she makes attempt to know what this ego is their own ego then they can go beyond ego similarly reading books can clear doubts make you understand truth but then you have to sit and contemplate and pay attention to this awareness and be with that we are pure awareness it is before any thought arises it has no ownership of any body or any mind it is impersonal this awareness belongs to all of us we cannot say it is my awareness and my awareness is different from your awareness even an ignorant person is always living in awareness but never paying attention to it when our desires are fulfilled and the deep satisfaction comes that comes because the projected mind has come back and merged into awareness that momentary happiness is our birth right it is always there no one is asking to go behind desires and lose peace just be here 
Desirelessness is wisdom. Or when the wisdom comes, all desires disappear. If a jnani has also a desire, he will also lose his bliss. All personal desires will take you away from this bliss. Then he cannot be a jnani. then he is also a fool. Why would we he or she will go behind a desire? Awareness is eternal truth, reality. Reality means which never changes. Mind and mind's projection is not reality. Everything is changing, coming and going. We call mirage as illusion because it appears, but when you go close, it is not water. <coughs> In this world, everything is changing. For a limited span of time living in body, things appear to be static or unchanging. But if you pick up history, in the last 500 years, so many things have changed. Awareness is Sat, reality. What we call Chitta, consciousness. It can only be known when all the coverings on it are removed, these coverings are all coverings of mind. Incessant thoughts, emotions, ahankar, ego, pure consciousness, has none of them. It is pure awareness. Be with that pure awareness. Evidence of being in pure awareness is Ananda, supreme bliss emanating from pure consciousness, which is reality, unchanging,
give up your individual identity and merge in this infinite pure awareness Now you become a drop which has merged in this ocean of awareness. Or using the body, still interacting, you become that drop in which whole awareness is there. You represent whole infinite awareness. Now all achievements are your achievements, all failures are your failures. You are one with everything. Creativity or this Devi power is not dividing. It only gives an impression, Abhas, that it is all separate. When we go within, knowing truth, After knowing truth, we know everything is one, one pure awareness. Keep your attention in pure awareness. This will merge your mind in pure awareness. Abide in pure silence.
silence without any thought, no ego, no I and mine. Make this body <clears throat> as instrument of God, which only means that when no ego is left, it works from pure awareness. Living in ego, we have a locus, a form, identity. Knowing the truth, no identity is left for the realized being. Externally, people might still call by the same name, see the same body, perhaps see the same actions also. That does not affect realized being.
This awareness is like a vibration. A higher vibration. Vibration of pure silence, aliveness and bliss. It is more living. Before knowing it, you were living in a body. Now you are living everywhere. In any mate, in an animate. In awareness, you are not doing anything for anyone. No one else is doing anything for you. Things are just happening. You are without intention. But in dealings in this world, you still use same terminology. You use all these terms. Thank you, sorry. Who understands things just happens. No one to blame. No one to praise. Be in this neutral state. Impartial state.
Don't behave as an individual. No one is individual. Don't show any ownership of the body. Even ownership of actions. Pure awareness. This pure awareness is our real Guru. It is our real Self. This is Absolute.
Om Shanti 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 Shanti